Hi, my name is Neil Scroxton and I'm the Managing Director of Scroxton Partners and today we're going to talk about Park Hue Permitted Development Barn Conversions. So as always, if you've got any comments for us, please drop them in the box below. Uh, tick the little bell and subscribe to get updated when new videos come out and like, follow us and share on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, so Part Q Permitted Development is all about barn conversions. It's all about taking a, an existing agricultural barn and turning it into a new, a new house. So this is one of my favorite ones. This is one of the changes of use that, that came in a few years ago that, that really helped to, to push on, um, allowing particularly self-builders to to, to start to, to, to create wonderful homes out in the countryside. Uh, it's been picked up a lot more by developers now um, because with, with everything once there's an opportunity to, to, to capitalise and make some money, obviously investment is going to go into to that sector as well. So it's, it's maybe a little bit harder to, to pick up bargains when it comes to, to barn conversions as it used to be maybe five years ago. Um, but certainly there's lots of opportunity and lots of, lots of options here for, for people to get great sites. So we'll start with the, with the, the fundamental basics of what you, what you can't do. If it's a, a listed barn or if it's a curtilage listed barn or if it's on Article 2 land or if it's in a conservation area or in an area of special interest, you know, permitted development is not going to be possible. So that's one of the first things that you need to, to check. After that, um, it's quite, quite free. So you can convert any type of agricultural barn. It can be a stone barn, it can be a metal barn, it can be a timber barn. There is, there is no restriction on what type of um, barn you can convert. And this is where some of the most interesting projects have been seen, where people have taken the old sort of metal Dutch barns or, or, or things that, that just they look a bit ugly from the outside initially when it's when it's just an old dilapidated barn but when you take it from a from a contemporary point of view it can be something quite exciting from a single dwelling point of view there are a few things to, to think about if the barn has a footprint of over 465 square meters which is huge for a single dwelling then that is going to be too too big you're not going to be able to get permitted development for that in fact your entire property has to have a, a maximum of 465 square meters. If you're looking to develop the site for multiple dwellings, so this, this 465 square meters then becomes the maximum that you can do for, for all of the houses put together. So they, they define two types of dwelling, a, a large dwelling and a small dwelling. There's not a great deal of detail in permitted development about what the difference is between a large dwelling and a, and a small dwelling, but essentially a large dwelling uh, you can have a maximum of, of three so a large dwelling being one that's over 100 square meters and so if i do my maths quickly on that that's a maximum of 155 square meters per per house if you're averaging it across but you could have one that was 200 square meters and then another two that were uh, 130 each. If you're looking at smaller dwellings, so if you're looking at dwellings where you might be having taken a big barn and terracing it into, into, into more units, you can have a maximum of five units and in those instances they're classed as smaller dwellings and they can have a maximum square footage of 100 square meters each. Now 465 square meters doesn't equally split into five 100s, so, so that means again you, you either need to have four at 401 at 65 or split the, 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 the difference evenly. There's a couple of key things that you need to check when, when you're looking at, at barns. Um, one, if the barn is tenanted, so if there's a tenant farmer that is currently using that barn, you cannot put the, um, the project through for, for permitted development. Also, if that tenancy um, was, was cancelled in the last year, um, you, you can't do it unless there is a letter from the, the tenant farmer explaining why the tenancy has been, been cancelled and you certainly can't do it if the tenancy was cancelled just so that it could be converted into a dwelling house. So that's something that particularly when you're, if you're looking at buying a barn and you don't quite know the, the history of it, you really need to check on, check on that with, the, with the, the farmer or the landowner that you're buying from. Another one is if the barn wasn't a barn before the 20th of March 2013, again, it's gonna to be too new and you're not gonna be able to get permitted development on it. This is designed to deal with older barns that are no longer in use, not give an opportunity to, to, to put up a barn and, and three years later um, you know, start to turn it into a house. Where we get into the technical parts of, of Park Hue um, is when we start to talk about the structure itself. So 
Um, I've, I've said that you can you can pretty much do do any structure and, and convert it into a barn. That comes with a little bit of a caveat. So Park U tells us that you can upgrade the doors and you can upgrade the windows. You can even add windows in. You can upgrade the walls and you can upgrade the roof. What it doesn't say, and this is where people have really fallen foul with Park U because all local authorities look for the loopholes that they can, they can use to stop things like permitted development. It doesn't say that you can upgrade the structure and it doesn't say that you can upgrade the floors. And so if you have a barn that has, uh, that has no floor, if you're looking at a barn that has no floor in it, and if you're looking at a barn that has a very, very flimsy structure, that is where you're potentially going to fall down because what the local authority are going to do is they're going to ask you to do a structural report on the project to make sure that if you want to put a new floor in, the structure can hold that new floor. And if you can't prove that, and even sometimes if you can prove that, if they don't believe you, they're going to use that for a reason to say no to permitted development. And, and like I said, the other one is if there's no floor in the barn, if there's no concrete floor down there, or at least an, an old stone floor down there, um, you're going to struggle again with, with permitted development. Another place where we've seen uh, issues around this is uh, barns that have no walls on a couple of sides. So if you've got a got a barn that's that's open sided on on more than one side, that also yeah you know, you're, you're probably barking up the wrong tree if you're going to try and get that one converted. So obviously as part of it, you're allowed to bring services to the barn. That again is is one of the technical details within um, within Park Q. It's very clear that you 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 don't have to have a water supply and you don't have to have gas, you don't have to have electric already there, you're okay to, to upgrade. And then finally, the last two things to, to think about is you're not allowed to put anything on the roof that would protrude past the roof line and you're not allowed to put anything on the walls that would protrude out past the walls. But you are allowed to demolish part of the barn as part of your construction methodology. You've got to be really careful here. This is another area where we have seen people fall foul of technical rules. You cannot demolish the entire barn and rebuild it. The second that you remove a barn structure and you, you take it down to ground, ground level, it no longer exists and therefore it no longer has permitted development rights. Um, we have seen in, in certain instances where contractors have come in and worked for, for people and they have, um, through, through best intentions, they've decided that the best thing to do is to pull the barn down and to rebuild it uh, so it's a little bit more, more stable. This is, a, this is a massive, massive faux pas. Um, it wipes out your ability to, to convert the barn under permitted development. You then have to go for full planning instead of permitted development and you can, you can lose everything um, in that, that instance. So, so whatever you do when you, are, when you move from the, the planning stage into construction, you need to be really, really careful about your construction methodology and how you're going to, to bring this building into a dwelling and make sure you pick a contractor that understands they cannot go in and just knock everything down and, and start again. Okay, so we've, we've whistled straight through um, Permitted Development Part Q barn conversions, which is all to do with the, the change of, of use from an existing agricultural barn to a house. Um, if you're looking at a project like this, if there's anything that you'd like to discuss, um, please drop us a line at the email address below or leave us some comments and we'll happily start a conversation with you. We have planners, architects and construction managers that can help you with the challenges at each different stage of a, of a project. So as usual, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, leave comments, share our content, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. My name's Neil Scroxton and thank you for watching.